Oh, uh, it's time for another math. Easy solution. Try to discuss further into integration by parts and now go over example four of the example series and solve this one, which states find integral of e to the power of x times sine x dx. Now, before I get to uh, solving it using integration by parts, uh, it's important to note that an easier method is using complex numbers. Now, we will do this in a later video. So now, uh, first of all, let's when we look at this one, if you were to solve this by parts, well, like I showed in my earlier video, the idea is to find the derivative of, of uh, one of these functions uh, that becomes easier. So when we look at d over dx of e to the power of x, this is still e to the x. So this is not simpler. Yeah, so it's not simpler when we take the derivative of d over dx of sine of x. This equals to cos of x. And again, this is not simpler. This is pretty much the, just an opposite of the sine where you're dealing with cos. But when we're dealing with uh, integration by parts, if you uh, when you uh, go over many examples, you'll start to notice patterns. And in this case, since this function here stays the same, and we're dealing with trigonometry, so sine, sine x, and cos, uh, these are just opposite of each other. So if I were to take the derivative of cos of x, we will get negative sine. So what this kind of implies is if we were to use integration by parts, uh, eventually we will get um, yeah, we will get the same integral again because that's pretty much what happens. Because when we take integration by parts initially, we'll get e to the x times cos x. Take that, then we'll have to do it again to get sine x. So then we'll have this integral twice, and we can add them up. So I'll show that right here. So yeah, if we were to write the uh, function out, the in integration by parts formula, so it would be u dv integral of u dv equals u times v minus integral of v du. And in this case, yeah, we'll pick our u to be e to the power of x. And uh, this is solely because when you take the derivative, that just becomes itself, so e, to the, e to the x dx. And now our dv, we would select uh, cos, I mean sine of x. Yeah, so this would be sine of x dx. And now our v would equal two the uh, integral of this, that's just going to be negative cosine of x. So now we can plug these inside, so we will get integral u, which is e to the x, dv, that's sine x dx, that's just the function we're dealing with, and now equals u, which is ex times by v, which is negative cosine of x. Now we subtract, now we put the, the v inside, that'll just be plus cos x, and now we have our uh, du, which is going to be ex dx, so ex dx right here. Yeah, and this is exactly what I had stated earlier. We were just going to get the same function as this, but we're going to have a cos x instead of a sin x. So if we were to do integration by parts again, but for this case, we would get ex e to the power of x times sine of x, and we can add those up later. So when we do this again, so we'll have... In this case, our u will equal, again, e to the x. And our du would equal to, again, e to the x dx. And our dv, we'll pick cos x dx. Cos x dx. And our v, now this equals to just sine of x. So now we can plug in our u dv. So u dv, which is cos x dx, equals 2 yeah equals to u and now we have our v sine of x subtracted by our v which is sine of x and our du which is e to the power of x dx so now we have the function that we started off with so that's this one and now we could plug this inside of this function so then we get basically overall e to the power of x sine x dx equals to this right here, which is negative e to the x cos x. And now we have a plus. Uh, yeah, so we plus this right here. This whole thing equals to this. So we go plus e to the x sine x minus uh, integral of e to the x sine x dx. 
Yeah, so now we have these two integrals that are the exact same, so we could actually move this to the left side. So that would be two times integral of e x sine x dx equals two. This is just, I'll take the e to the x out of there. So e to the power of x sine x minus cos x. I just rearrange it to look nicer. So now we can divide the two out. And also we have to add the constant of integration, which is always there whenever you take an integral. So the, the our final answer is going to be e to the power of x sine x dx equals two. This is going to just divide this by two. So e to the power of x divided by two sine x minus cos x. Now we have a constant plus c and this is our answer. Yeah, now like always we can double check our work by basically taking the derivative of this answer right here and we should get this right, uh, we should get our original function inside because we always know that the integral is just the antiderivative. So if we have the answer, the antiderivative should be the inside of this integral. So d over dx of the function of the answer e to the power of x divided by 2 times sine x minus cos x plus c. So just to double check, so now we take the integral of this using the product rule. So the derivative of e to the x divided by 2 is going to be, well, the same thing, e to the x divided by 2. Now we just multiply that inside here, sine x minus cos x. And now we have to, the second part of the, the, of the product rule, now we have to add this e to the x divided by 2 times by the integral of the inside function, which is going to be cos of x, the integral of sine x, minus the integral, I mean the derivative of cos x, which is negative sine x. We have to add minus there. We had to add a min two negatives to become positive. Sine x right there, and the derivative of a constant is 0. So we have this part right here. If we factor out the e to the x divided by 2 and add up the like terms, we have a sine, two sines, so 2 sine x. Now we have a negative cos x and a positive cos x. So those cancel, we're left with this. The 2's cancel, and now we're left with e to the x times sine of x. And that is the uh, function we're taking the integral of. Yeah, and this basically just shows that we got the right answer. Yeah, and this basically just shows that uh, this integral is the antiderivative of this function. Yeah, so anyways, that's all for today. Hopefully you learned from this video. And like always, you can download these exact notes in the link below. And thanks for watching, and stay tuned for another math easy solution.